Hello guys, this is only Abi Doang and today I'm gonna talk about the free new June 2020 update patch for The Sims 4. I usually don't do this kind of thing, but since this update is so big, I decided to make a video about it and explain all the big new additions. If you have the original version of Sims 4, you should be able to update this now through Origin if you haven't. So without further ado, let's take a look on what's added. First edition I'm going to be showing you are the new makeups. There are around 12 new makeups added to the game, ranging from eyeshadows, eyeliners, blushes, to lipsticks. And you can easily recognize them in the game from their thumbnail alone because you'll see the word MAC on it. It's because these are the result of a collaboration between The Sims and the makeup brand MAC Cosmetics. To be honest, I don't really follow this kind of stuff so I don't know whether these makeups are good or not. But yeah, there you go, more new makeups in The Sims 4. I just hope there are not too many townies having a more um, fascinating appearance with them, to say the least. Anyway, again, I know nothing about makeups and whatnot, but you know what? I'm gonna transform Emily's face a bit with this new glow up appearance. I hope I'm doing this correctly. Still relating to new creative sim stuff, children and toddlers receive around 20 new styled looks. No, not new clothings or accessories, but these pre-made clothing sets that you can use if you're too lazy to dress them up one by one. All of them are base game compatible, so everyone can gain access to them. I didn't pay enough attention to this part before, so I'm not sure which one is the new one. Because of that, I'm just gonna show you all of the base game ones. Okay, now that we're moving on to the neighborhood select screen, let's talk about the new neighborhood map tags. You might know these tags that appear on newer neighborhoods from other packs like San Mai Shuno, Brindleton Bay, etc. Describing about each particular districts. While in this update, older neighborhoods like Willow Creek, Oasis Springs, Newcrest, and Winnenburg also have them. From now on, each of the districts in these neighborhoods have their own neighborhood tags with unique names, icons, and descriptions to give you more insight regarding that particular area. Now we dive into the new gameplay stuff. First one on the list is ladders. Yeah, this long requested object is finally in the game and it's included in a free update, not in an expansion pack, thank god. So ladders are basically like stairs. They can be used by sims to traverse upstairs and downstairs, but they only use up one tile of space, so it's an excellent option if you want to save some space. You can place them inside and outside, and sims will automatically use them if needed. Besides that, you can also manually click on the ladder and either climb up, climb down or slide down. Yep, you'll have the option to descend by sliding down the ladder and it's much faster than climbing down. Also, you can place ladders as tall as you want as long as there are reachable floors above it. Heck, I even made one starting from the ground floor and straight to the tallest height you can build in this game. And apparently, you can slide down with this ladder as well. I tried having Emily do it to see what sort of horrible outcome can happen and even after sliding down faster than the speed of sound, she's completely fine. She even gained a happy moodlet because of it. Damn it, Emily. There are several things to note regarding ladders. Ladders can be used by children, but pets and toddlers cannot use them. Well, for obvious reasons. You also cannot use ladders when holding an object or carrying pets or toddlers. Ladders can be used by more than two people at once, and in fact, your sim can collide and pass through each other when one is going up while the other is going down. So if you have like a group of sims going somewhere together using the same ladder, expect to witness an early preview of the next Human Centipede movie. One more thing, you can kinda make a bootleg bunk bed with ladders, so that could be a replacement for it until a real bunk bed gets added. Let's say you currently have a lot of visitors in your home. You want all of them to leave, but asking them to leave directly can take some time. While in this update, if you click on any sim that's currently visiting, you can use the new send home interaction to have them out of your house immediately and with no effect on your relationship. And if there are multiple visitors and you want them all gone, just click on your sim and choose send everyone home, so all visitors on the lot will leave immediately. The inventory system is also getting a big overhaul. When you open your sims inventory, there are many new options that'll make your inventory more organized. You can set several objects as favorites, fill their objects in many categories so you can easily find them, sort your inventory depending on the chosen category and set it either in an ascending or descending order, and you can even multi-select items or even select all items. Selected items can then be conveniently sold or marked as favorite. This whole thing is extremely useful, especially for hoarders and collectors like me. One other feature added is the no trespassing interaction on your home's front door. 
His interaction completely prevents certain types of visitors to show up altogether unless you ask them to come yourself. There are four categories of visitors that you can forbid. Neighbors, friends, solicitors, meaning sims that visits you because of certain events like welcome wagon and challenges, and vampires. Ah, finally, no more disgusting fruitcakes and vampires randomly sucking my neck at night. This new feature is gonna be builder's favorite, because now if you press the Alt key on PC when placing doors and windows, they can finally be placed freely instead of being locked into the grids. This works on windows, doors, and also arches. Now you don't need to worry about awkward problems like this from happening again. Besides the inventory, bills are also getting an overhaul. Now you can either check your upcoming bills either from the phone or from the mailbox. You can now see that bills can be affected by many different factors. This includes lot taxes based on value of objects on the lot, the amount of both electrical power and water consumed throughout the week, other taxes such as unpaid service or fees, tax discount and penalties which are derived from gameplay elements, and even unpaid bills if you have any. Besides that, you can also check out on your power and water utility consumption and production. If you have extra power and water supply because you somehow produce them, it will lower your bills and you can even sell them directly for some simoleon. Water and power production are not really a big thing in the base game, but there are many ways to produce them in the new Eco Lifestyle Expansion Pack. Besides those conditions, if you activate the testing cheese on cheat, you can increase your power and water consumption and production by shift and left clicking on the mailbox. These options will influence your water and power utility storage. So you might be wondering, what happens if you don't pay your bills? Well, as you may know, before the update, if the bills are already long overdue, your electricity will be shut down and if you still can't pay it after a day, your water supply will be shut down. Usually, nothing happens after that and they will both be turned on once you've paid your bills again. But now, if you haven't paid your bills a day after your water is shut down, a repo person might pay you a visit. Yes, after working exclusively to repossess students in depth in Discover University expansion pack, they are finally making an appearance in the base game. Once they've arrived, they will take one or more items from your house to pay your debt back. And in my case, he decided to be a jerk and took both of my toilets out of all objects in my house. After repossessing them, your bills will be paid and both your water and power supply will be turned back on again. So the off-the-grid lot trade has been around for a while where your electricity and water will be turned off so your bills will be lowered, but the selection of objects will work. Anyway, there are some enhancements and improvements to off-the-grid living in this update. Off-the-grid objects now has their own build mode category so you can easily find objects compatible with it. Now sims living in the off-the-grid lot trades are able to produce water by themselves and reduce their bill even more. They can gather water from various sources, such as fishing spots and water pumps. Also, if you have different packs, they can also gather water from snow from seasons, wishing well from romantic garden stuff, the fish pond from get famous, and the ocean and waterfall from island living. Yeah, Emily, let's just collect some water from that contaminated greenish water which you'll drink later. Once gathered, you'll notice that your water utility level will increase. With excess water, all your plumbing objects that have limited interactions are now fully functional as long as you still have extra water. You can also sell them if you want. There's a new interaction called Add Ice, so refrigerators in off-the-grid lots can function normally, but they will melt slowly, so you need to keep the fridge filled with ice periodically. Harvestables eaten on off-the-grid lot now grant unique buffs. Usually it's a positive happy buff, but there's a chance you'll get an uncomfortable one instead. Dirty objects can now be cleaned using the use elbow grease interaction. It's basically the same thing as the regular clean interaction, but they're just called differently here. And finally, there are various new recipes that you can exclusively cook on off the grid lot. Keep in mind that most of them require you to have their fresh ingredients first. Some of the new meals are fish on a stick, forager stew, poke bowl, boiling for a hot pot, and leaf wrap whole fish. All of them will also grant you positive buff when eaten, and some of them will even have benefits like boosting the increase of certain skills and stuff like that. Some build mode objects can now affect your gameplay through modifiers for each of them. This includes wall patterns, floorings, fences, columns, doors, pools, fountains, and even roof patterns. These modifiers can affect different aspects, such as water and fire resistance where some floorings are more resistant to the spread of water puddles and fire than others, bill discount and surcharge where some objects can increase or decrease your bills when placed, 
environmental score gain and loss which is like how normal decoration object works, water and power consumption where some objects will increase your power and water utility usage on your bills, and this eco footprint modifier which will be more relevant and influential once you have the new eco lifestyle expansion pack. If you don't want built objects to affect gameplay, you can turn it off in the settings. And finally, one of the last big new feature here is the return of firefighters. Whenever you're too clumsy for your own good, fire might appear out of nowhere. And if you don't have any other fire extinguishing system like alarms or sprinklers, you can always either use your phone or click on the fire to call the fire department service. And once you call them in a suspiciously calm yet a bit rude tone, two firefighters will immediately arrive through teleportation instead of in a fire truck since motorized vehicles can be used in Sims 4 as of now. Then they go to the fire and both of them will usually extinguish them on site. But for some reason in one of my case, only one of them did all the work while the other just stood there doing nothing. Oh shut up Greg, stop cheering, you did nothing. Once their job is done, they will leave your lot. Also, if you have the fire alarm, you know, the fire alarm that does nothing other than beeping loudly when there's a fire before. Anyway, they are now integrated with firefighters when there's a fire nearby. For example, if you decided to light a firework indoors near it, it will beep loudly and two firefighters will automatically appear without needing to call them first so they can extinguish the fire, and hopefully your stupidity too. Besides that, you can also call them to come even if there's no fire. They then get angry because there's no fire starting in the first place and you'll be fined 500 simoleons. Additionally, you can also gain access to the firefighter outfit through create a sim. Once worn, it will provide you with the fireproof buff. This buff will make your sim much more resistant to fire and have the ability to extinguish fire more efficiently. So those are some of the major new features in the June 2020 update for Sims 4. Besides those, there are many other minor additions like pet's poop can now be used as a fertilizer, bicycle helmets are now available for the base game instead of Discovery University, the free earbuds offered from fitness stuff pack are no longer offered through phone calls, but you'll obtain them for free passively through notifications, etc. Many bugs are also fixed in this patch, like the infamous Get Famous expansion pack bug, where you cannot play the actor career actively. I cannot talk about all of them in this video, so I already provided the link of the complete update notes that you can check out for those small changes and fixes in the video's description. Thank you so much guys for watching this video, hope you like it and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't for more Sims videos like this. See you later!